I wish the whole world could have a Peggy. I wish everyone could just curbside a Peggy, put her right in your, right there in the trunk of the car, take her home. Got you a prayer warrior right there, man, just right off the shelf, you know, it's awesome. You might send me back. <clears throat> no. I've always thought it'd be awesome just to have a Peggy on the shelf, man. It's anytime you need that, that, that love, a hug, a grandma, a, you know, right there, just pull the Peggy off, get you, hug it real good, talk to her. Well, bear with me here real quick. Let me pray. Lord, be with me today. I, I need your help, Lord. I, I ask that these be your words and your wisdom and not my own. Lord, please get your hands dirty so that you may use me. In your name we pray. Amen. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Well, actually, let me stop here. I'm reading out of Romans 6.14, written by Paul. Romans 6.14 through uh, 7, if y'all want to get there in your handles, or Bibles. <clears throat> for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin, because we are no longer under the law, but under grace? God forbid! Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. But, but God be thanked, pardon me, I have a bit of a coffee moment, but God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to the uncleanliness and unto iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to the righteousness unto holiness. For when you were servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things, wherefore you are now ashamed? For in of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and, being be and become servants to God, you have your fruits unto holiness and to the everlasting life. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Okay, so law, the Jewish law, we'll just start with like Ten Commandments. Uh, they're there to prove to you that you're a sinner and that you cannot uphold the law. That's why God gave it to us to prove to us that we are sinners. But we're not held to the law. We are now held under grace. What is grace? Grace is a thing which is given to you that you could not earn nor deserve. In other words, we are sinners born into sin and we're saved through Jesus Christ who was sinless and died for our sins. Amen. That's the grace. He died for us for our sins because we couldn't die for ourselves because we're filthy. He was the clean one. He's God's chosen, God's son, God's only begotten son came here died for our sins not because he it was he did it because he needed to wanted to and because he had to for our sakes being created humans being created in sin then there must be a cure for that sin therefore Jesus and it speaks of in the beginning Let's make man in our image and after our likeness. So they were already talking about this long before he knew he was going to have to do it. This was always in the works. Grace was always the plan. Grace is Christ. And that was always the plan. But now that we're saved through grace, in other words, we have forgiveness. He says, what now? Can we just sin because we're under grace? He's like, no. You know how many times you want to crucify Jesus, man? 
He did it once. Okay. We are saved under grace, but we also have repentance. But in being saved, there must be a real repentance in the heart. So if you're truly saved, then you're going to want to do these things. Want to not be the old self under grace. But we are uh, natural born sinners. Like I said before, you take a child and you just let it grow up without any parental control. It would be the most vile thing you could ever create. And it would be. I mean, we have Roman emperors that got to do exactly that and showed you exactly what it would produce. Let's go on then. What then? Shall we sin because we are under not under the law but under the grace? God forbid! He's like, no! The law is just to show us that we can't do it. Grace is now the way to be saved. But you to be saved, to say I want to change my life means you must do that part. Do the changing. Now the changing doesn't happen overnight. And yes, we do fall back into sin every day. But it goes, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants are to whom ye obey. In other words, you're a servant to what you give yourself to. Are you a servant unto your vices? Are you a servant unto your... I mean, what is your master? Because if you're a servant, you now have a master. Right? Servants require masters, or it's your, what are you serving? So what is your master? What are you... Sell? People self-serve. Mainly, I think our biggest master is ourself. Because we self-serve. It self-soothe and self-do what we want to do because it's what we want to do. Says in Matthew, though, Matthew was a tax collector. And he says, you cannot serve God and money because you'll love one and hate the other. Well, Matthew being a tax collector, I'm very, I can say that he probably had the best idea of money being your God. That was his job. And everybody hated him for it. And they're like, Jesus, what are you doing, man? You're hanging out with a dude that takes all our money and gives it to the Romans, bro. He's like, yeah, well, I'm not here for the saved. I'm here for the sinners. So, in Matthew, it says you can't serve two masters. You can't serve, okay, is it money? Is it drugs? Alcohol? Sex? Uh, internet? Just Entertainment? I will tell you, I serve YouTube, man. A lot more than I do with the book. And that's horrible to say. But I do spend a lot of time in YouTube. Amen. Mainly on through the power of YouTube on how to fix things. But I do also catch stolen football highlights and other things that I shouldn't be watching. But, you know, the <clears throat> those things of sort. Who do you serve? Whom is your master? Alright, let's talk to you men. What's in your gun safe? What's your master? Tell you what, go sell all your guns. Give it to charity. Give it to the, your, your best uh, missionary. Split it up. Hmm. Oh. Uh. As soon as the world is all saved. You know, I got enough between... Yeah, Jerry, I'm going to leave you out of it because I already know. <laughs> let's just say... In this church congregation, there are enough firearms to arm a whole neighborhood. But, in that being said, you only need so many, it just becomes a want. Right? You want to see a grown man act like a big kid? Go in the gun store. Yeah. Oh, you know, I was saving that money back for vacation, but I'll never get that deal. There's always justification. It's like buying tools. Gonna use it sometime. I can always sell this gun more than I bought it for. What's, what's your God? What is your master? What do you serve? Could you really do that? Like Jesus said to the, the, the rich Jew. He's rich young ruler. He's like, I've done all these things. He goes, well, then sell everything you've got and follow me. And he's like, I can't because I have so much and I love it too much. Who is his God? See? So what is your God? What is in between you and God? Yes, you're saved. 
But what is your salvation? Okay, I'm going to read this to you right here in the very end. For the wages of sin is death. Now you can take that as surface value. The wages of sin is certainly spiritual death and spiritual descent. But let's take saved Christians and if they keep indulging in sin you know what sin does it's the death of anything it's not just the death of your spiritual life it's the death of things it's the death of your marriage it's the death of your career it's the death of your relationship with your children it's the death of many things it's the death of your witness, it's the death of your witness. yeah I can't tell you how many times I have been flat ashamed of myself because I profess to be a Christian and then turn around and not act <laughs> like one and you know uh, this is probably a really heck of a thing to say from the pulpit, but you know, I've given up liquor years ago because I can't handle it. You're, I pour liquor in this hole and then vile things come back out of it. You know? So you ever notice when you put bad things in yourself, bad things come out? Amen. Right? Hey, all in moderation. I'm not here to point any fingers. Like I said, God's getting his hands dirty right now letting me up here. I'm a sinner. I am. But I'm here to explain to you, you can still be a saved Christian and have other gods before your God. You can still have sin in your life that is creating death in your life, though you're spiritually saved. But let's also talk about sin and spiritual descent. Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden. And they ate of the fruit. And God's all-knowing, all-seeing, all-everything. He knew exactly where Adam's at. But what he wanted Adam to feel was the spiritual disconnection. Adam, Adam, where are you? Where are you, Adam? You've cut yourself off from me. And that's spiritual disconnection. We're saved. But we can still, you know, you're spiritually alive, but physically dead. Spiritually starving. Chris, Chris, where are you, Chris? Lord, I've been drinking. Uh, I've been doing this. I've been watching TV till I go to sleep. I, I, you know, I've been doing everything but paying attention to you, God. I've been trying to distract myself from everything else but what I should be doing. Right. Why? Because we're children and we act like that. That's why he's our father. You know, he's not human, but he still has all our attributes. He gave them to us. He has so many human attributes that he made a male and a female. And then when you put them together, you get closer to God. Now... You don't have to have the counterpart to be close with God. And sometimes God says it's best that we don't have counterparts. So those without counterparts doesn't mean you're any less close to God than the married person. Because that's not true. Where I'm going with this is that God made man. Male and female. And he gave them separate but the same attributes. Though put together can work in perfect harmony. Call the family. Balance. But let's get back to who do you serve? Who is your God? Where do you spend your time? Now, time. Huh. Okay, I'll say it real quick uh, on the aspect of tithe. God really don't want your money. He wants your time. You can die with all the money in the world, but you only got so much time. What's more precious? What's more precious? That's right. That's right. So you give God your time. So, but if he's not your master, are you giving him his time? I mean, uh, I go to church twice a week. Well, there's dudes that go to the country club twice a week too. Play golf, never talk about God or anything. There's plenty of people that do things weekly. You know, people can treat church like a country club. You know, you can be in church without roof and walls and ceilings. Matter of fact, that's how it started that way. So, who is your God? And you can't serve two masters. And if you're putting one in front of the other, then I'm sure that you can actually see where you're going wrong. Let's 
said, but God be thanked that we were servants of sin, but have obeyed from the heart the form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Okay, what does that mean? It means the Holy Spirit came into you. God came into your sinful life and got your attention. You're like, wow, I've been. And then you can see, I can clearly look back in my 20s when I did not have Jesus and see completely where I was going wrong. I was serving the wrong master. I was chasing heavy metal bands and trying to look as hard and mean and just be everything that I wasn't. And it was all a big lie. And I never fit in. You want to know why? Because that was never God's intention for me. I was just running around looking like an idiot. <laughs> but hey, but through my heart, He came to me through the Holy Spirit and said, I am your master. You are a sinner. And I said, yes, Lord. Jesus, you, you are the way, the truth, and life. You die for my sins, and you're the only thing that can save me. You, inter you intercede between me and God. You answer my prayers. Now think about that as well. When you're serving two masters, you serve one but pray to another. It's like you do, you hang out with him all week, but when you need something, you come to me. Something hard to think about. Then he goes, I speak after the manner of men because the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members, servants to uncleanliness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members, servants to the righteousness and unto holiness. Well, right now, I feel like Paul's calling us sheep. You know why God calls us sheep? Because sheep are dumb. If you don't think you do dumb stuff, then look in the mirror. You'll find something. I do all the time. But where he goes here, <clears throat> I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. In other words, I speak to you men because you're weak-minded. Okay? You used to do sinful things. You used your body and you committed these things. All right, well, you don't do those. And now we start doing that, what God would have you do. Well, what is that? Well, not clearly sure, but each one of us has a job. We'll start with prayer. We'll start with prayer. Let's start with prayer on everything. Because if you're in the slop, severe lack of prayer, slop. Severe lack of prayer. Now, if you're power prayer, you're still going to have problems. And you may still occasionally find yourself in a slot, but Jesus is always there to take you out. And, God, you know, He doesn't pluck us out of the fire. He pulls us through the fire so that we learn. And He's like, who is your God now? That's right, I was there, baby, G-O-D. First wireless connection in the world. Talk to me. I'm here. Yeah. For you were servants of sin. You were free from righteousness. In other words, you may or may not knew what you were doing was wrong. I mean, think about it from this perspective. Sexual sin. In this day and age, all anything goes, it's okay. But is it? No, it's not. But just because other people say it's okay, you can even find yourself mixed up in that and committing such things just to later find out I was wrong and you can be forgiven. But... How many of us look in our past and go, wow, wow, you were served, we were free from righteousness. But it says that what fruit had you in those things? What fruit, what good was coming out of it? When you were doing all these things, what good came out of all that? What good were you doing before you met Jesus? No good. Up to no good. Yeah. No matter how old you are, you're up to no good without Jesus. I'll tell you what, if you got to hide it, you're up to no good. That's 100%. You know, uh, Jesus talks about trees that don't produce fruit. You know, he says you chop them down, you throw them in the fire. We all know what that means. <clears throat> and he says, what fruit had you then in those things which you are now ashamed? Now that you ever notice how, well, I can tell you, I don't know if you've been at the men's prayer breakfast, but, you know, occasionally men like to boast in how bad they used to be. 
Well, in my twenties, I used to drink case of beer and step on that road hunting. String goes on. Well, then, oh yeah. Well, in my twenties, and you're just glorifying all the bad things you used to do, like you miss it. But you had to get away from those things to change your life to be where you are right now. Talk about it. So why do we boast on the bad things that we do? Just to say, okay, I, you know, maybe not boast about it, but say I have been there so that we can relate to this situation. But man, we got to be tough and this and that. So, you know, yeah, I was bad and I'll tell you how bad it was. <laughs> you know? I've met some bad dudes in this church. A lot of them have passed. And they were some bad dudes in their youth. I mean some bad dudes. And I ain't gonna name no names. But uh, they turned out to be some really good dudes in the end. Excellent. Ones that I actually model myself after. And, you know, I don't think Probably, he would never let us know, but Don Watson was one of my idols. Now, I won't say idol in the church, that's bad to say. He was someone that I greatly looked up to. Yeah. Greatly looked up to because of his intelligence, his wisdom of God, his demeanor. Uh, just everything about him was collected and a model of what you wanted to be as a Christian. Good steward of his money would help anyone Amen. you know but I know Don somewhere along there had a string of bat I'm not trying to beat anybody down but this, we're all humans so who's your master who do you serve are you Christian in name only you know are you suffering the spiritual descent do you have you felt like you know where is God in my life well maybe it's because you've walked away there's things that we need to evaluate about ourselves. And who is your master? You know, just because we're saved, God forbid, we keep going on the way we used to. So if you're struggling in your life and you haven't asked Jesus into your life, that is the first thing that you must do. And it'll help you recognize where you've gone wrong. Without Christ in your life, without the light of Christ, You'll never see where you're going. You'll never see where you're going wrong. You must have Christ in the heart. You must be guided by the Holy Spirit. And we're here by divine design. Created in this image after His own image. He has the plan to fix it all. To fix it all. So, yeah, we're not spiritually dead. We may be spiritually descended. But who is your master? And I know I'm repeating myself over and over. Who is your master? Is it Marlboro? Is it marijuana? Ain't is it funny. is it meth? Ain't funny. Is it alcohol? Is it money? Is it porn? What is it? Is it things that you covet and and collect that really don't matter to anything? When is the last time? You took care of a missionary. When's the last time you were just a servant of God? I'm not talking about your two days a week at this country club we're in. I'm talking about serving when you're not here. What do you do when you're not here? Because that's where we're at 90% of our time, not here. Finding yourself in prayer, finding out, self finding for forgiveness, and helping others. Where is the servant in your life and who do you serve? If you don't serve Jesus Christ, if you don't have Christ in your life and you want to commit yourself to Christ, you want to change yourself, you want to say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He's the only thing that can save me from my sins, you come on down here, we'll get you saved. You're not saved by me, you're saved by confessing it. You're not saved by baptism, you're saved by confessing it. Baptism is the first step in obedience. So once you believe, you must. But it doesn't save you. It's just an obedience. But must just like in our obedience of, of baptism, we got to live this obedience. We have to live for the things of righteousness, for the things of holiness. <clears throat> where, where do you start that? 
We sin with our eyes. So let's start with what we watch. Let's start with what we stare at. So if you don't have Christ and you want Christ, come forward. We'll get this talked out. But if you do have Christ and you feel, Lord, where are you? Are you feeling that, Adam, Adam, where are you, Adam? Because we've been sinning so much that we had not been getting down with the repentance. You know, you can win every fight from the knees, man. Every fight from the knees. You got giants in your life? You got a Goliath in your life? Hit it from your knees. Hit it from your knees. You can win all things in prayer. You take these two hands, and you put them like this, or like this, or on this, or on your face, and get to talking to Christ. And let's get back on point. Let's get back to the righteousness of things. Let's, get, you know, let's not do those things that we're ashamed of. If you're doing something that you have to hide, change it. If you have to lock your phone because if someone else might see the content, that's a problem. I pride myself in being able to leave my phone anywhere and let my wife. I want her to coon finger through my phone. I do. Because I got buddies of mine that, oh no, I'd never let her in my phone. I'm like, well, that's got to be a struggle keeping that hidden, bud. <coughs> wow. So if you got to hide, you're wrong. So in conclusion, who's your master? Who's your master? Now as the musicians come, I'm going to stand out front if anybody would like to come forward know that if you'd like to confess your sins, you don't have to do it to me, but I will be there for you. I am not the intercessor between you and being saved. You're saved the moment that you accept Christ into your heart. If you would like to talk about things in prayer, Page 307, Just As I Am. Please stand. <laughs>